if we if we looked at the the forties, the the, the Frank from one thirty one down to ninety three, that was about twenty nine percent correction. So that was <clears throat> from 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 the from the top to bottom. That's how sort of deep it was, so twenty nine percent. So that's that's pretty decent. That's pretty equivalent to where we're what twenty seven percent on the S and P. So something similar to what what we had then. But the thing that strikes me, Chris, is look at that. 42, that rally there from, you know, out of 42. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a 57% rally in in a really short period of time. So <laughs> that's the sort of, and I thought, well, okay, so you, so you sort of get, you know, get your weakness initially, get some big bounces there, you definitely get some volatility through there. Um, so then we sort of, you know, we cooled off again. I think we um, think that, after rallying 57%, it sort of probably dropped um, dropped a little bit there and sort of just hovered there. It was a bit of volatility. We had a couple of good years without inflation. Then, then we had a bit of a drop again, another 25% correction because inflation came back and then we're up and down, we're up and down sort of. Um, I think we're down, I think might have been up 27 off the low and then we're at down eight and then we we finished up two and, you know, but we were, we were just pretty volatile period up and down, up and down there. So it was just, Period of volatility there, so so the forties really just sort of showed us that we had a you know had, had a bit of a correction early, had a massive recovery, and yeah, you know, in the face of big inflation, so that was just you know that wasn't sort of inflation disappearing, that was just inflation subsiding, um, and then yeah, so this this is here. I mean, I, I saw that's the thing I understand is that people are out here sort of talking about ah uh, you know. Inflation, you know, I feel it's going to do this. Well, mate, let's put Look feelings. Just, let's put feelings aside here because feelings don't serve us, you know, well when we're talking about markets. What what does history tell us here? So history just tells us most of the damage is done early. Then we tend to have a big recovery, um, and then we have a more of a constructive but sort of sideways volatile period. So that's what the '40s sort of told us. So property prices were sort of. Pretty similar through here. Obviously, this was in the end of World War II, so um, there was a few construction issues. Housing prices didn't sort of move too much, and then they sort of moved higher later on. But obviously, like most most asset classes, didn't perform that well in high inflation, but they still went higher. Um, but you know, you um, but you sort of you do need to be long assets. That's the thing, you know, if you if you you know, if you're sitting in, I saw, you know, I saw a few blokes talking about putting money in bloody term deposits yesterday, a few analysts, and it's like, right, let's get 3% while inflation's at 6 Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Jesus. You know, <laughs> um, that's not going to cut it, I'm, af I'm afraid. So um, we need to be, you know, um, yeah. I mean, you've, you've seen here with equities just that now, um, that you can still make good return on equities and other, other asset classes there. So definitely don't want to be sitting in cash here. Um, if we look at the seventies, that's the other. That's the other period, and that's the one that everyone, everyone's the most afraid of. This period of so, of something similar, because the seventies had um, it was something like eight years of high inflation. So, um, so we you know we had you know six point two and seventy three eleven nine point one five seven six and a half seven six eleven point three and seventy nine thirteen and a half and 1980, 10.381, 6.1 and 82. And then, and then, you know, finally sort of um, inflation eased. And then what, what, what do markets do? Markets went crazy once inflation disappeared. So, so again, looking at the seventies there, and this, this is the worst case scenario, um, is that um, we get seven or eight years of high inflation, which is too early to be calling that, Chris. It's sort of, we're not, we're not there yet. It's, um, you know, um, but markets had a decent drop there. Obviously, that yeah had a pretty decent um, fall there, around forty six percent from the highs there. That obviously had run pretty high into that that period, and then had a pretty decent pullback. But what what came after that forty six percent drop was an eighty percent rally. Eighty percent rally. Eighty percent is yeah. huge. <laughs> it's a career making and, rally. And that what well, that is. Um, what are we looking at there? I think it was, you know, maybe around 15 months or something. So that is a quick recovery in markets there and a big move back up to retest the high in the face of what? Nine and 6% inflation. 
it was less than 11 percent. So that's what they were coming yeah. off wasn't it yeah so I mean, you know i get inflation's not good here but historically again the, the damage was done early when we bounced we got a massive recovery massive bounce off the lows and then we sort of went into this sort of sideways but volatile grind here so even after that you know after the 80 percent drop i think we sort of eased off around 29 percent, which is around sort of where, you know, what, what we've had and then we bounced up 20 and we're down 20 and up 40 down 25 so we went through a pretty volatile period again so history is telling us here that most of the damage is done early we get a massive recovery once we're done <laughs> and then we after the recovery then we go into a bit of a sideways grind here so um yeah so maybe playing some high beta plays here off the low here is the play um and then once we've rallied up into this once we've had this recovery then we go back into our shell and we we get a bit more conservative and value orientated once once we've had that bounce because then we're going to be in for a bit of a more of a grind here but but no again it's the interesting thing here is it's not all doom and gloom um so it's not as bad as everyone out there is maybe um, portraying here i guess is is what history is telling us and i mean that's that's a pretty mean period there what's you know jesus look at that 11.3 and 79 13 and a half 10.3 so I know so that so that is as bleak as it gets so to me that's our worst case scenario so if if we can if we can handle that um then we should be right you know but we just got to know what what can happen there is obviously we've had a decent pullback um yeah can we go can we go further down here yeah of course we can of course we can obviously with you know in the past here we've seen some bigger we've seen moves equivalent to ones we've seen and we've seen one here which is pretty nasty period uh, maybe a little different um a little nasty i'm pretty sure there wasn't as many jobs going around in the 70s as there are right now um but um but yeah it, look each period sort of different um but th there is there's some definitely some similarities there and i guess you know if we if we can prepare for what's the worst case scenario then, then we can deal with that you know look if I've, I've sort of put a couple of tweets in there um a couple of stocks as well but if, if we if we go to that last um the last spreadsheet there chris which I, I think i've had up maybe three or four times here because that's really just that's that's that should sort of highlight to us what the proposition is um if we go through our worst case scenario so if we do go through uh you know high inflation for many years what sectors perform the best there and obviously energy you know but again look, look at some big up years and then some negative years um so that's pretty that's pretty risky to be you know you've really got to nail those and it feels like Andy's had a massive move already can it continue high of course of course it can but um but that's going to be rocky it's going to be volatile some there was some big up and down moves in those those periods precious metals pretty similar big up and down big up and down um that's been an underperformer here been a laggard here so maybe there's an opportunity in that sector um and then really we're looking at value stocks is is the is the star there 13.6 percent um and then high dividends yielding stocks as well you know because again if you're going to be sort of sitting in going to be high inflation there you want to be getting some if you've got money and assets there you want to be getting paid um so being in growth is sort of going to be you know, so it's probably small caps and growth is probably where you don't want to be if we're going through high inflation so that's just you know it's important as traders investors that we understand the risks in front of us and what could happen and if we can build a strategy around that then that's fine so that that's probably for me that's probably the most important chart because that 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 picture is our worst case scenario and that's not that bad that still sort of tells us if we if we have a portfolio of value stocks we might be able to get a 13.6 percent return over the over the next decade if we go through like Stanley Drunken was telling us here that we might have 10 years of no returns but well, we still got a pretty decent return here. I can tell you that property um only returned nine and a half percent over that um, over that period and I think there was three or four years where actually um the pro I think there was actually three years in a row where, where the price of property went down in in, a, in a, I think most of Australian capital cities might have been 70 might have been 70 
I think I'll put it in the report there somewhere actually. Um, but the three years in a row were basically the you know the price probably went down. Um, but then obviously you know if you're looking at yeah you know, that's taking taking out inflation there. But if you add obviously inflation in, um, then each each year the price of property really went up. So, um, but if you're only going up nine percent and inflation seven, then you're only getting a small gain. So, but it's the same sort of shares as well. But it does tell us here that value value stocks that's the place to be so in a worst case scenario so maybe we've got a trend yeah if inflation does persist we've got to probably trend you know transition to that type of thinking but that's that's our worst case scenario so that, tells us there's, there's opportunity in the market we just need to be in yeah, exactly market. exactly still some great opportunities there I mean, the, the thing that really excites me is that 57 percent rally and the and the 80 percent rally coming off the low off the first leg down so that's exciting that's that's a that's a big move that's you know that's why you know i think that the low could be in here chris personally and look i might be wrong i think there's a lows in here but if we only if we get a move that's only half of that it'll be pretty decent and so the thing about midterm years is the average rally for the end of the year is about 20 percent um for the last two months and the average rally for the next 13 months from midterm years around 49 percent of the dow so Again, if we only get half of that or you know, two thirds of the average, it could be pretty exciting. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't think it's all doom and gloom here. Um, I'd be, you know, I'm, I'm thinking here that maybe, maybe the worst is already um, in the domain and um, yeah, markets can rally here. And I think yeah, the markets do sort of bounce here, Chris. Everyone has there's so much cash on the sideline. I mean, the, I didn't put a tweet in the other day, but there's, I think that was the was the highest um, amount of puts um, bought was last Friday, something <laughs> ever, or something, something like it was sort of like it was it was off the it was off the scale. It was sort of like it was a, it was a, just basically everyone was short, and they were short. You know, obviously some of these like now you can buy sort of weekly puts as well, so you can buy a lot more sort of shorter stuff there. But but it was just it was just you know negativity, negativity, almost to the point where I think I mentioned on on, on Friday's report, I you know. I felt like Robertson Cruiser. I felt like, oh, is anyone who's bullish? Um, and every every man these dog is bearish. And it's like, well, but I'm trying to say to myself, okay, well, normally when you're near the low, everyone's scared and you're you are afraid to invest. That's you know, but that that's the right time to invest when you're the most, you know. So if you've been in the market long enough, again, this this is make the point. If you if we, we invest based on our feelings, we'll, we'd lose money. You know, we're basically we have to understand that when things feel their worst and they feel dire, that's usually the best time to be entering the market there. So it did sort of feel like that end of last week here. So um, yeah, be interesting. I think if we, if we do rally here, Chris, I think everyone's so light on here. Um, and if we get a follow through day in the next you know, three or four days in the States where we see like a big up move on big volume. So if, I think if the, if the market rallies, um, I think more than one percent up, and it goes up on yeah, um, stronger volume there. That'll get people excited, and then if the market jumps here, then everyone's so light on they'll be oh shit, what do I do? Is this is just a bear market up, rally. <laughs> yeah. FOMO kicks in, and then everyone's underweight, and markets are going up. Oh, shit, I need to get involved, and it's just that's the whole classic, you know, market psychology of sort of chasing in. So look, I might be wrong here. I just I can just sort of I feel like this is. A movie I've watched before, and um, we'll, we'll see whether you know whether it plays out. But. Yeah.